Good morning. Thank you for being here. House Republicans have been disciplined and unified in exposing Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi's failed leadership. And the American people are listening. We're just nine months into Joe Biden's presidency, and 71% of Americans say this country is headed in the wrong direction. In Joe Biden and House Democrats America, it's crisis after crisis, and the American people are taking notice. When asked in the newly released NBC poll which party would do a better job of handling the issues that are most important to American families, Republicans win issue by issue by issue by double digits. On border security, Republicans lead Democrats by plus 27 points. On inflation, Republicans lead Democrats by 24 points. On crime, Republicans lead Democrats by 22 points. On national security, Republicans lead Democrats by 21 points. On the economy, Republicans lead Democrats by 18 points. And when asked which party is most effective at getting things done, that same poll with both Republican and Democrat participants had Republicans leading Democrats by 13 points. Back in June, when I started this job as conference chair, the New York Times called these crises facing America Republican buzzwords, questioning if this message would actually resonate. It resonates with the American people because it is true. This poll is proof that Democrats in the mainstream far-left media are far too concerned with propping up Joe Biden to understand the impacts of his failed policies that they are having on the American people across the country. House Republicans will continue to provide strong and trusted leadership on all of these issues, especially when it comes to securing the border, stopping these massive spending packages, reducing inflation, which is a tax on every American, and supporting our law enforcement to keep our communities safe and end this crime crisis. Joe Biden and Democrats' poll numbers are in free fall, and Nancy Pelosi's days with the gavel are numbered. She is a lame duck Speaker of the House, which is why she has, goes to Europe so often. And with that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Congressman Rob Whitman, who's been on the road quite a bit, hearing from his constituents in the state of Virginia. <coughs> Rob. Thank you. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and, and good morning. And as uh, Madam Chair has said, I've had the opportunity to, to travel across Virginia and, for that matter, to hear from folks across the nation. And there's a movement afoot, a movement afoot where parents are very concerned about what's happening in their schools. Parents that are speaking out now to school boards, indicating that they want to be in control of their children's future. And they've gone from not knowing who their school board members are to now running for school board. They also, too, have been very adamant that they want their schools to be able to teach their children not what to think, but how to think. Those are things that have resonated across Virginia. We see those in the national headlines, but they're in every community across the nation, making sure that parents are, are empowered. And when they see a letter from the National School Board Association, that asks the Attorney General of the United States to go after parents who speak out at school board meetings under the Patriot Act and be, to be treated as terrorists, we tell you folks, they are deeply concerned about that. And then when the Attorney General follows suit and goes to the federal law enforcement agencies and says, by the way, look at these parents and what they're doing at these school board meetings where they are practicing their First Amendment rights to speak out and to demand that their school systems reflect what's best for their children. That's what is, I believe, the undercurrent that we're seeing come to the surface now across the nation where parents are saying, I'm sick and tired of it and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's where we are today on, on the education issue and I believe parents want to make sure that they are in charge of their children. They also want to make sure too that they're able to choose the best path for their children. That's why school choice is so incredibly important, especially for folks in minority communities that want to be able to escape failing school systems. Parents are demanding also school choice. In addition to issues of the economy, and you heard uh, the, our, our, our chair speak about that, those things are incredibly important to folks, as well as issues of security in our communities. People want our local police departments and law enforcement departments to be supported. They want to make sure they're properly funded. They want to make sure that they join with the community and make sure our communities are safer. Those are all issues that are incredibly important. And what we've seen in Virginia is that they have come to the forefront. Education, the economy, 
public safety. All those issues are incredibly important, and I believe that as we see the results of today's election, that's going to be a bellwether for what people want to see happen across our nation. So I appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit of what I've seen and heard across Virginia, but Virginia, as I said, again, is the bellwether for the nation. I think that this is the, uh, the effort that we all need to be looking at of what's necessary going forward to get our nation back on track. We will now go to Congresswoman Yvette Harrell from New Mexico. Yvette? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for joining us today. So $450,000, that is actually more than the average home price. And while President Biden is napping over in Scotland, Americans are here struggling because of his failed policies. The notion of actually paying illegals $450,000 only adds insult to injury. No other country in the world would actually pay people for breaking their laws, entering their country illegally, and then rewarding them for bad behavior. And it's bad enough we will have almost two million people in this nation by the end of the year. That's almost the entire population of the state that I come from, New Mexico. This, this hypocrisy coming out of this administration is unbelievable. And this is just like typical President Biden fashion. No one even knows the cost to the American people that this new idea of paying illegals $450,000 will cost. And remember, this is, this is on top of the $3.5 trillion tax and spending bill. And bear in mind, there's $100, $100 billion in the bill already for immigration, immigration benefits. So when we're looking at the bigger picture, how is America going to pay for this? How does this make Americans safer? I mean, does Joe Biden and the Democrats really believe that we should pay illegals more than, the vet that our, than our victims from 9-11, or more importantly, our Gold Star families? I don't, and I don't think Americans do either. And with that, I'll turn it over to Republican Whip, Congressman Steve Scalise. Thank you, Yvette and Rob Annalise, and this week is yet another example of just how misplaced President Biden and Speaker Pelosi's priorities are and how out of sync they are with the everyday Americans, the priorities and concerns of hardworking families all across America. People that are tired of paying for all of Joe Biden's failures. When you look at inflation, when you look at gas prices now over 50% higher than they were a year ago, and what is Joe Biden's answer? It's to shut off production in America, jet off to Europe in planes that are fueled by jet fuel, which is fossil fuels, to try to tell other people around the world that we shouldn't use fossil fuels. And then ironically, the two biggest emitters, China, Russia, are exempt. They're not even going to be participating in this folly in Europe. I would imagine everybody's wondering what the carbon footprint of this global warming conference is in Scotland. In fact, if you take more than 540,000 Americans, they don't emit more carbon in one day than what these European leaders and Joe Biden and his entourage are emitting right now in Scotland, flying jets. In fact, they said the airport is so overfilled with private jets that the jets have to land in Scotland let the passengers off and then fly to another airport and park because there's so many private jets flying over to Europe to tell everybody in America to change their lifestyle because fossil fuels are destroying the world. If you want to save carbon emissions and lower carbon emissions, maybe they need to stop doing all of these global warming conferences and zoom it in. If they want kids to zoom in their education and it's good enough for kids all across America, maybe they should be zooming these calls these conferences in instead. And by the way, stop beating up on America because America was leading the world in reducing carbon emissions through American technology and energy dominance, both being done at the same time during President Trump's administration. And during that period, we also had less than $2 a gallon gasoline. And so families were getting the rewards of energy dominance and lower carbon emissions and in less than a year, President Biden has reversed all of that, where we have higher gas prices and higher carbon emissions, and we're sending more jobs to China, and Americans are paying the price for it. Hard-working families. And what is his answer? 
to try to raise even more taxes, to try to increase spending by trillions more this week. Today will mark the fifth different time that Nancy Pelosi has promised a vote on the House floor on this massive multi-trillion dollar tax and spend bill. Five different times she's promised a vote, and I would project that today she will blow through that deadline as well because they don't have the votes. And I think after what you're going to see in Virginia tonight, where you're seeing all across the state of Virginia, people are rejecting big government socialism. They're rejecting these union bosses and these elected officials who are beholden to union bosses trying to tell parents not to be involved in their kids' education, as Rob Whitman talked about. It's encouraging to see it not just in Virginia but all across the country where parents are getting more involved in government because they see government failing the needs of their kids. And that's ultimately what's at stake here. People are fed up with the big government socialism and the people that are so out of touch with the hard working families that make this country work. When they look and they see Joe Biden want to add 87,000 more IRS agents to snoop into their personal bank accounts to fund $450,000 checks to illegals, people that came here illegally. And then in this bill, they actually have amnesty for millions more illegals. Yvette Harrell talked about the $100 billion in this massive tax and spend package to go to people that came here illegally at a time when families are struggling. 71% of Americans say the country's on the wrong track because of the failures of Joe Biden's policies. And their answer is not to work with Republicans to solve these crises, which we stand ready to do. Their answer is to double down on the failure, to jet off to Europe and talk about wrecking our industrialized economy, exempting China, exempting Russia, Frankly, Joe Biden's begging China and Russia. He's begging OPEC to produce more oil while he's telling Americans they can't produce oil in this country. Uh, people are fed up with that kind of hypocrisy and with the damage it's doing to families in the form of higher inflation. It's not just gasoline that's over 40% higher, but it's all of the things that people buy at the grocery store. As our conference chair, Elise Stefanik's talked about, this will be the most expensive Thanksgiving ever because of all of this inflation caused by Joe Biden's failures. It's going to cost more to buy a turkey. It's going to cost more to buy sweet potatoes and cranberry sauce and anything else people want to put at the table when they're bringing their family together. And what is the answer of Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi this week to try to double down and raise taxes even higher, including a natural gas tax that will hit all families, to spend trillions of dollars more, including giving $450,000 to people who came here illegally while they're trying to tax families higher on their natural gas bill when they pay for their electricity. Uh, they are out of touch with the hardworking families of this country, and that's why people are rejecting this big government socialism. I'd be happy to take a few questions. Mr. Sir, please. Sir, both, yeah. both your state and Ms. Stefanik's state have been hit hard by uh, <laughs> climate change-related natural disasters, even as recently as this year. Um, what is the Republican plan for addressing climate change as you've criticized President Biden for going overseas to this global climate summit? Yeah, well, first of all, we had hurricanes a lot longer than we've had changes in carbon emissions. Carbon emissions have been around since before uh, man walked the earth. I mean, you've seen 10,000 years ago, you can look at the record, and we had warmer temperatures on the earth than we do today because it goes up and down. We've had freezing periods in the 1970s. They said it was going to be a new cooling period. And now it gets warmer, it gets colder. That's called Mother Nature. Uh, but the idea that hurricanes or wildfires were caused uh, just in the last few years is just fallacy. If you look at what we're doing in Louisiana, for example, we actually work to restore our coast, to put barriers out uh, where they don't exist anymore because we cardened off the Mississippi River. Over 100 years ago, America made a decision for commerce to put levees up all the way down the Mississippi River. That used to deposit silt all throughout the delta of South Louisiana. You don't have that silt anymore going into those areas to rebuild land because the levees harden it off and then it all dumps off in the Gulf of Mexico. So what are we doing? We're actually using some of the revenue from drilling. It's called revenue sharing. We use the revenue to rebuild land. Uh, if you cut off the ability for us to produce oil in the Gulf of Mexico, that actually takes away our ability to go and restore that land, the funding source that we use to rebuild land, to put barriers in place so you can knock storms down before they hit land where people are. Those are the kind of things that we've been doing uh, to deal with storms that have been coming here for thousands of years. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, if you look at what we've done in America, we were reducing carbon emissions. No country reduced carbon emissions more than the United States of America, and that was when we got out of the Paris Accord. There's not a single country in Europe that's in compliance with the Paris Accord, including France, where Paris is located, and yet they want to wreck our, our economy like they've wrecked their own economy. Go look at the price of natural gas in France and in, in other parts of Europe. People are dying in Europe because they can't heat their home during a, hot, a cold winter. And yet they want to do that here in America while exempting China. China's the country that's emitting more carbon. If you want to make things in America or somewhere else in the world, if you want to make steel, for example, much better to make it in Pennsylvania than in China or India. They emit about five times more carbon to make the same steel in those countries than if you made it here because we have better standards. I know Joe Biden loves to go to Europe and bash America. And yesterday he apologized for America again. But he fails to recognize and point out the fact that America was reducing carbon emissions. America was leading the world in something really good with American technology, and it's countries like China and Russia who are emitting more carbon. We ought to be making more things here in America. That's how you would reduce global carbon emissions. Mr. So, Scalise, sir. Uh, Whip Scalise, thank, thank you so much. Uh, taking a look at the reconciliation bill, Senator Joe Manchin came out on the other side of the of the chamber came out today and said, or came out yesterday and said that he's not going to support this uh, until he finds out what impact it's going to have economically. House Republicans' reaction to that? Well, you've heard the president over and over again saying there's no cost to this bill. It's laughable. People know when you add trillions of dollars of new spending on top of the trillions they've already spent, that is the leading driver of inflation. People are already paying too much for goods uh, and everything that they buy because of the trillions already been, be, that have been spent. If you had trillions more in spending, of course it's going to have a cost. Not the least would be the natural gas tax, which everybody who uses natural gas would pay. President Biden promised that nobody who makes less than $400,000 will pay a dime in new taxes. The problem is he breaks that promise with his natural gas tax, among many other taxes in this package. So this will hurt families even more than what he's already done to hurt families with higher inflation. It's why 71% of people think we're on the wrong track. Capitol Police Chief uh, Tom Manger um, imposed a COVID-19 vaccine mandate on all Dignitary Protection Division special agents. I was wondering if you support that decision, and I, I also uh, would be interested to hear uh, how Chairwoman Stefanik feels about it as well. Sure. I don't support the mandates. I've encouraged people to get vaccinated. I'm vaccinated myself. But ultimately, it's a personal choice. And I think you're seeing this all across the country where they're putting mandates in place. And look at some of the states where they put mandates in place. We're seeing nurses get fired uh, because they didn't want to get vaccinated. Uh, when we have a shortage of nurses, you're seeing police officers get fired. And, and don't make any mistake about it. Uh, this is part of their defunding the police strategy when you look at some of the states where they know they want to defund the police but they also know the public is against defunding the police. They know that if they put a vaccine mandate in place about 20 percent or more of the police officers and firefighters will ultimately get fired because they're not vaccinated and so it's a de facto defund the police strategy. Uh, let's let people make their own decisions. Everybody's got the facts out there. There's a vaccine that's available and you can get it. I think it's safe to take, and I, I've taken it myself, but there are also people who have made it clear they're not going to take it. And that's a medical decision. We should be encouraging them to talk to their doctor, but you shouldn't be taking away somebody's career and livelihood and hurting their family uh, to prove some kind of point that government wants to make. And I'll, I'll let Elise yeah. answer that too, and I'm going to you. The negative consequences of a mandate, um, you can look at New York State and New York City specifically for uh, how this is exacerbating an already incredibly challenging labor shortage. There are multiple fire companies in New York that have shuttered. Uh, one of the fire department leaders said that the response time will be slowed. Uh, this is while after two years of historic crime rates, you're having a, a, a high number of retirements as well. Uh, hospitals in my district, you have two hospitals, Lewis County General Hospital and Alice Hyde Medical Center, that are no longer able to deliver babies in their maternity ward units. These are rural hospitals. Uh, it's important to have access in your community but because of the mandate and because of individuals uh, who have chosen based upon conversations they've had with their doctors. So the mandates are already, um, they're already exacerbating and further uh, making worse a labor shortage that we have in this country, particularly with our first responders. So, so, uh, two questions. Uh, one, um, 
many of you voted to overturn uh, the election results in January. Will you accept the results, uh, particularly you, Mr. Whitman, accept the results of tonight's uh, election in Virginia? And then, second question, you kept mentioning the $450,000 proposed settlement uh, to a lawsuit uh, brought by uh, these immigrants. Are you suggesting that the Biden administration should fight the lawsuit and risk an even higher jury verdict? Is, is that not a misuse of taxpayer funds to pay more if a jury awards it than settle for less? Well, they absolutely ought to fight. Uh, a lawsuit brought by someone who came to this country illegally who's asking taxpayers for millions of dollars to just say you're going to give everybody $450,000 well, first of all, you're going to have a flood more lawsuits than you already have, and it's going to cost taxpayers of this country billions of dollars to pay that off, not to mention they're putting amnesty in this tax, tax and spend package for millions more people so to come here. So it would be a magnet for even so more people, so they need to fight it. They ought to win the lawsuit. They would win it if they fought it. If they settle it, it's only because they want to give billions of dollars away to people here illegally, which, again, and I think Elise pointed this out, Gold Star Moms, you know, I pointed out, Gold Star Moms, don't get that much money. 9-11 victims don't get anywhere near that amount of money. So it's offensive to hardworking families that President Biden wants to give billions of their tax dollars to people who came here illegally. I'll let Rob talk about your opinion. Sure, absolutely. You know, the election results will go to the State Board of Elections. They, they will certify those results. The Congress has no role in certification of those I results. The that issue that I had with the uh, the, the electors in Pennsylvania was there was a pending Supreme Court case, which is clearly within our purview to say that we are going to allow that question to be answered. That's why I voted against certifying those electors. But as you know, in Virginia, it will be up to the State Board of Elections to certify it, and, and certification there will certainly be something that uh, that I will look at and make sure that when it's certified, I will accept those results. Thank you. Thank you.